What is up, everyone? It is your man on fire mentor, David Mailer, and it is a privilege and always an honor to be here and serving my fellow brother. For those of you that don't know about Man on Fire, we are a personal development company and we are specializing in helping men have mastery over their minds and be able to get out of their head and break into their body and take all these intellectual teachings and understandings from different seminars, from different videos, from different audio files and get it in your body. Start feeling again. Start being able to connect to your emotions again and start using the vessel that directly connects us to fellow man as well as to God and that is called our heart. Yes, it's about making that sacred journey from here to here. And we also specialize in supporting men in up-leveling their masculine leadership in different domains of their life, whether it be their marriage, their relationships, their career and finances, their health, and their mission and their purpose. So without any further ado, let's dive right into today's topic, which is how to be fully expressed as a man. So let me clarify, anytime I speak about a certain topic, it's important that we define, well, what is it that I mean by that? So if I use the word energy, if I use the word spirituality, if I use the word God, we may not all be meaning the same thing or we might not give these words the same meaning. So when I say how to be fully expressed as a man, here's what I'm really talking about. I mean, how do you as a man who has both masculine and feminine energy, how do you express yourself in a way that's authentic and it's coming from the gift of who you are, it's coming from the congruence of who you are, it's coming from the authenticity of who you are, where you're fully aligned with the real you, the nature of who you are, as opposed to through the different hurts and the different wounds and the different traumas you've had in your life, you've gotten off track and you're no longer aligned with the real version of you and now you are living more in your wound and you're more in the nurture from what happened to you more so than your true nature. And if that's the case, in the way that you might be expressing yourself in this world might not be to your full capacity. It might be what's called compensatory, meaning you might have adapted, you might have compensated for feelings of inadequacy, for feelings of lack of worth or feeling unlovable and next thing you know, you've put on many masks and you become an actor in this game that we call life and you're not being fully expressed. This was me, so I know exactly what I'm talking about as it relates to this because we've all had our fair shares of hurts and wounds and traumas. For me, I know one of them in particular started at the age of five where I was playing with my dog Brandy and while playing with him, he passed away in front of me. Naturally, as a five-year-old, I thought that I was responsible for his death I told my parents that, I told the mailman that, anyone would listen, I told them that. So then the question is, who did I become at that stage of my life? I became the guy that felt like he could never do good enough in the eyes of his parents, and I'm certainly undeserving of their love, especially of my father's love. So then the question is, how does that affect me being fully expressed as a man? Well, I developed being a pleaser, I developed being a yes man, I developed turning uh, women into mom, you know, whether it's a girlfriend, whether it's a school teacher, whether it's a fiance, whether it's a wife, it's like I'm looking for people's approval and how could I possibly be in the full expression of who I am as a man if I'm kind of just living out the expression of my wounds, of my traumas, of my hurts, meaning I had a schism in, in the true nature of who I am and I started taking on pseudo personalities. I started taking on ways of being that weren't really fully aligned with the real version of me. So that is what I mean by how to be fully expressed as a man in that, number one, I'm not referring to a man as whether he's masculine or whether he's feminine. Um, we operate in the man on fire world that a uh, very high percentage of men at their core, at their core nature, are masculine in their core nature. And yes, there are a certain percentage of men where they're more feminine in their core nature. I'm not talking about what sex they are, man or woman, sexuality, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking energetics, that there's a difference in masculine energy than there is in feminine energy. And at the core, 
Most men are more masculine, however, and we'll talk about this on another uh, live, most men have put on a feminine mask and they've buried their masculine. And many women today don't feel the full safety in expressing themselves and revealing the fullness of their heart due to the lack of maturity and leadership by a man who's not really in his full power. And so many women put on a masculine mask and their masculine energy is running the show more so than their feminine energy. So when I speak of being expressed as a man, I mean relative to the core nature of your energy. And yes, we all have a masculine and we all have a feminine energy. And the idea is to be fully integrated for a man to have both masculine and feminine energy and for a woman to have both masculine and feminine energy and, and more importantly, to allow which energy to express itself when it's appropriate as opposed to doing it as a compensation for feeling like you're not good enough. So I'm going to guess that you guys are starting to follow me. Feel free to smash up that like key. Feel free to throw me some comments, throw me the fire signs. Let me know you're enjoying this. Let me know what you're taking away from this thus far before we dive in a little bit deeper. Okay, so now that we've established what I mean by a man who has both masculine and feminine energy, and I'm referring to the fact that we want to be at a place where we have a beautiful integration of the masculine and feminine. So in other words, my wife loves that I have a masculine and feminine energy. She loves the feminine part of me. She loves that I'm receptive, that I can feel, that I can express myself, that I show my emotions, that I connect with my heart and that I'm not so headstrong and always bulldozing her and being, you know, just so in my masculine where the weight on the scales all tip to one side. She loves that I've developed my ability to sense my external environment, sense her emotions beyond the words that she's speaking, where I could speak into existence what's really going on. She loves that I have that level and depth of being able to receive and being able to listen and be able to hear and hold space for her. And every man should have that ability. Every man should cultivate and develop that skill set. And she also loves that when I need to be more in my masculine energy, it's authentic. It's not like I'm putting on a mask. It's not like I'm trying to fluff up my chest and be some pseudo alpha man that pumps his chest or maybe use force where you know I want respect, but I'm not really earning respect. So now I'm raising my voice or gaslighting or steamrolling which is something that we taught at one of our workshops called Reclaim Her Heart, where we went over the different masks that a man wears to compensate for not feeling like he's good enough. We talked about the pleaser. We talked about the yes man. We talked about turning her into mom. We talked about the steamroller and gaslighter. And we talked about the guy that's the martyr, the guy that wants to be the rock, where he does everything for everyone else, but he really forgot about himself. And he forgot that until he puts himself first and grows himself he can't really bring the full version of himself to the relationship. So if you want to learn more about that, once you go on our site, manonfirerising.com, eventually you can find your way to most likely getting this workshop that we did in the past and it's still for sale for you guys. And you can absolutely learn a ton about how to reclaim her heart by taking off your masks and being the real version of yourself. So if you're joining me now, you just learned, okay, what do I really mean by man? And I broke it down into understanding the different dynamics of energy, masculine and feminine. So how do you be fully expressed? Like, what does that mean to be fully expressed? Ah, let's dive into that now that we've kind of put to the side what I mean by man. Well, what I mean by fully expressed is, do you roam this earth as a man where you are biting your tongue? Are you walking on eggshells? Are you tiptoeing on broken glass? Are you having conversations internally as opposed to externally? Are you letting the voices in your head take over? Or do you have the ability and the courage to speak up and to speak out and to connect and to express yourself fully where you're in your power? Now, most men, if they're honest with themselves, and this was me, would say, well, I usually don't say anything, right? And this is, let's say, specific to relationships. You might say, no, I don't really like to ruffle any feathers. I like to keep peace. I grew up in a tumultuous environment. My father was always drunk or my father was always angry. A lot of you were thinking, and I just want to keep peace. So, you know, I'm easy to get along with. I'm very 
uh, you know, agreeable and sociable and gregarious. So I just want to keep peace. So really, th there's no reason to, to express myself when these things that bother my partner or bother my wife, they don't really bother me. I don't really mind, you know, where we eat dinner or, okay, if she wants to go to the Bahamas as opposed to Puerto Rico, as opposed to Italy, no big deal. And the question that I have for you is, well, what's your truth? What's your truth? And when did you start biting your tongue? When did you stop expressing yourself? When did you not have the power to fully own your voice? When did you lose your ability to confront situations without being confrontational or adversarial in nature? Where did your voice go silent? Where did the cat get your tongue? Where did you lose that voice? Maybe you had your tonsils out. Maybe when you would speak up as a kid, you would get punished and you weren't allowed to fully express yourself, but I'd like you to take a look at it in your life. Are you truly fully expressed? Are you really speaking up? So for example, we run these four day immersion intensives. It's called the Man on Fire Rising Immersion. And we get roughly 32 men in a room for four days. Yes, we're out in nature, we're connecting with the trees, we're connecting with the land, we're connecting with the air, the fire, everything, you name it. And we know that the seminar is intense and we know that it's going to push your buttons and we're going to call you to a living with a higher level of authenticity and congruence. And we know that we're going to stretch you beyond your comfort zone because we all know that's where growth begins, right? At the end of your comfort zone. So we tell the guys all the time, hey, you have pirates in your head that you're constantly listening to. What, what pirates? Well, you know, when you promised yourself you're going to go to the gym tomorrow morning starting at 5 a.m. and the alarm clock goes off, all of a sudden there's a negotiation with the alarm clock. Well, that negotiation is the pirates. That's not you. That's the voice in your head that somehow you're listening to and you're taking no action on a voice in your head that is not you. So we tell the guys at the program, hey, listen, no one leave this program in the middle of the night or have a unilateral conversation in your own head. Don't decide to yourself, I'm out of here without actually having the courage to speak to one of our coaches or to speak to me, meaning have a communication where there's you and there's another person and you're in dialogue with one another. But more often than not, what happens for a man is he's in dialogue with himself. He's making decisions because he can't see what's invisible to him and it's always what's invisible to us that's running the show. It's always what we're not aware of. It's always what we're unconscious to. It's always what's beneath the radar of our conscious mind, the subconscious. That's what's running the show. And every now and then, we'll get a guy that will try to leave the seminar. It's rare, but it happens. And it's always the same thing. He had a conversation with himself. And we tell the guys, what happens in our seminar room is exactly what's happening outside of our seminar room. So let's deal with it here. Let's get to the wisdom. Let's get to meeting a new version of yourself that can handle this in a whole new way. Let's help you step up as a masculine leader. How about you have a conversation with a coach and you have the safety and the courage to fully express yourself without feeling judged, without feeling attacked, and feeling loved. But most men have not learned to fully express themselves. So they have this one way, unilateral conversation in their head, which is with their ego, by the way, with the ego, which stands for edging God out, we all know that, or it's the preservation of your identity, that strong force that's trying to get you to not change your ego and your identity. They don't want to lose their job. They don't want to lose their job. What do you mean lose their job? I mean, they don't want to make room and move over for your soul, the real you, your true authentic nature regardless of what parents you grew up with, regardless of the town, regardless of the culture, regardless of the religion, like who are you outside of all of that? So ego and identity, personality, it doesn't want to lose its job to soul. Soul is like the real you. It's your direct conduit to speaking with your heart and speaking with God. It's where you start to come into and trust your intuitive guidance, your intuition. And then you start speaking that into existence. Now I know on Instagram, my apologies, I lost you guys just now on the live, so it's gonna reconnect in a moment, but I believe on Facebook, you guys still got me here. So I'm gonna keep going on Facebook and hopefully on Instagram, the connection will be restored. And uh, 
So what am I saying here? I'm saying that to be fully expressed, you have to, as a man, learn to become comfortable in your skin. Well, how am I going to do that, David? Well, you have to sign on for a life of growth. You have to develop the hunger, that insatiable appetite, that unquenchable thirst to truly want to grow yourself. And as I've spoken to in other podcasts and other lives that I've done, you must be willing to no longer tolerate a life of complacency, no longer tolerate a life of neutrality, no longer tolerate a life that's just good and just fair and just average and just bland. You literally have to have the hunger to want to wake up. And it's not for every man. Not every man is willing to cross the bridge to go from here's where I'm living and what's shown up in my life and here's what I truly want. Well, that's a rickety bridge where some of the wood is splintering and breaking and we're afraid to cross the bridge like Andy Dufresne was afraid to climb through the tunnel and get to the other side where it was rain and it was the light and that was the life of freedom. Not every guy's ready for that. So how do you start to be fully expressed as a man? Well, you have to be willing to want to grow yourself. And it's not just like, oh yeah, I want to grow myself. Like I mean hunger, right? Because we in life will get what we've been willing to put up with. And most of us unfortunately have a very high threshold for how much pain we're willing to endure before we actually make a change. And most of us are making changes by default because the divorce is now upon us, the car accident is now upon us, the health challenge is now upon us, there's a death, God forbid. But most of us aren't waking up until something tragic has happened in our life. It doesn't have to be that way. So to be fully expressed as a man, You have to be able to come home into the real version of you. And that means you're signing on for a life of growth. That means you're going to be with other guys, other men, other teachers, other guides, other mentors that are going to point out to you your blind spots that are going to hold you to the fire of who you truly are and call you forward. Yeah, you'll be called forward, but with an open heart. At least I can say that that's the case in the Man on Fire Brotherhood. Our motto is we will love you home to the remembrance of who you are. Love you home, right? If we're coming from a place where we're in our heads and we're coming from our own chargers, our own polarities, it's not the right community for you. In the Man on Fire Brotherhood, our commitment is to love, be in our hearts, not judgment. Love you home to the remembrance of who you are. Help you find your light. Our role as men is to come home to our light. Become the lighthouse. Reignite the internal fire, the heart energy again and come back and home into the remembrance of who we are. So in doing so, of course you're going to start to be a fully expressed man in this world because you're no longer willing to bite your tongue. So let me give you a small example of something that I'm speaking to here which shows up for a lot of guys. So there are lots of guys that will violate their own truth, that will violate their own knowing that will violate the deepest intuitive guidance inside of them. And this is what we have to rely on as a man. We must come home to our home of intuition, trust our gut, trust our heart. And more often than not, because so many of us are stuck in our heads, more often than not, we're relying on logic. We're relying on the T-chart, the pros and the cons, the negatives and the positives. And we are overriding our greatest vessel, our heart. We are overriding our greatest opportunity to have wisdom, our soul, our intuitive guidance. We are violating our own values and principles and moral compass because we become so disconnected from feeling and hearing and seeing beyond our normal range where we've lost our ability to connect to a source of intelligence, a source of wisdom outside of our mind. So what ends up happening is so many guys will get into a relationship that deep down they knew they shouldn't be in. So many guys will end up saying yes to getting engaged or to getting married and it's not what they truly wanted. So many guys will end up in a business partnership or doing a career path that they truly don't want to do. That is not a fully expressed man. That is a man that is living in his wound. And I'm not saying this to make any of you feel bad because a lot of you right now could identify with what I'm saying, saying, yep, that's me, that's me. I I said yes when I meant no. I said no when I meant yes. I'm living out a life that I feel like I'm stuck in, I'm trapped in, and it's not the real me. Help, what do I do? And the antidote is really simple. You have to be willing to grow yourself, and part of growing yourself 
is you start to trust your intuitive guidance and you start to own your voice again and you start to make right what you made wrong, right? Because if you dishonor yourself, right? I can't tell you how many men and women I've met over the years, but now specifically I work with men where they'll say, yeah, I knew not to get married, but I figured, you know, we've been together for X amount of years, 10 years, and I feel like it was the right thing to do or, you know, I owed it to her. I'm like, no, what you owe her is the truth. What you owe your soul is the truth. And when you honor your soul and you speak it into existence, this is a man being fully expressed. Everyone benefits from you honoring your true knowing, from you honoring the deepest level of truth that you have access to. But so many of you have these reasons and this thought process that's based on analysis and logic of why you should do something when your intuitive guidance tells you within a second, no, that's not my truth. But you override your truth. And so you lose the ability to be fully expressed as a man. Where else does this show up? Well, how many of you could say that you have extraordinary relationships, not just with your wife, but with your children, with family? I mean, how many of you have severed relationships with a brother or with a sister or with somebody in the family, a mother or father, or maybe even your son or your daughter? How many of you is that the case? And are you really being fully expressed? Is someone holding you to the fire of swallowing your ego, swallowing your pride, and birthing into a perspective that's been sitting outside of the normal range that you see life and calling you into a higher version of yourself where you could be more expressed, right? We have one of the brothers in our community who's now on our team, Brother Joshua Khan, and he went from being a fraud to being a leader, and he had this whole thing where, you know, I'm not gonna have a relationship with my father, He's never been able to say, I love you. He's always been cold. He's always been mean. He's always been harsh. He's always been selfish. Screw that. I don't want to have a relationship with him. And literally, there was a time in his life where things got physical between he and his dad. And the two of them wrote each other off. And, you know, that will never fly in my community. So I held Josh to the fire. I held him to the deepest truth that his soul can have access to. And the truth is he loves his dad. The truth is he needed to step up as a man and be the masculine leader and own his voice and speak to his father and let his father know I love you and it hurts to sometimes feel that you don't love me and I know that deep down you do and it might be hard for you to express it because of your upbringing and what you had with your father, right? And so Josh, and as a leader, you go first. You don't wait for somebody else to say I love you. You as the man and as the masculine leader, we go first. So Joshua ends up swallowing his ego and his pride, checking in with his internal truth, getting back in touch with his father, and next thing you know, they develop a beautiful relationship where his father not only was able to express love to Joshua, but also to Joshua's two children. And Joshua was given the beautiful honor and privilege, the sacred privilege of being able to help his father through his transition to the next life. And literally had the privilege of bathing his father in a way that he was so vulnerable and guess who he trusted with that responsibility was his son that he didn't know how to show love to and how did this happen it happened by joshua being fully expressed as a man no more biting his tongue no more withholding of love and being able to come into his masculine leadership the more mature masculine man and be fully expressed and when you can live from this space gentlemen when you can live as a fully expressed man, everything in your life changes from your relationships, your marriage, the depth of intimacy, your ability to follow your mission and your purpose, your ability to generate more money and have a better career, your health, you name it, everything in your life will shift when you learn to be a more fully expressed man. And this is one of the things that we're super passionate about at Man on Fire is teaching a man how to rise with more passion, more power, and more purpose, and helping you and showing you how to get out of your head and into your body and into feeling again and using those feelings as leverage to start making fundamental change in your life. And that is our specialty, that we will hold you accountable through support, through love, through challenge. We will hold you accountable to the real version of who you were born to be. Because all of us want the same thing as men, right? We all want that last breath to be one of absolute freedom and fulfillment. Absolute smile on our face, total joy, where we know we gave, we loved, and we served with every ounce and every cell of our being. We gave it all, and we left nothing on the table. No regret, 
played full out in life. And at Man on Fire, we are here to support men in doing exactly that. There's no magical wand, there's no magical fix, potion, lotion, or genie that's gonna save you. That's not what our company's about. It's for the man that's truly ready to do the work and and really break into his body and dig up all the goodies that, that he buried and start living a more authentic, congruent, and coherent life with that version of you that you signed on to be with your soul and with your creator. And if you're listening now and you wanna discover if one of our Man on Fire coaching programs is right for you, then I encourage you to go to manonfirerising.com, look around, click on the link that says apply for a discovery call, and we'll see if you are eligible to speak to one of our coaches. And then the two of us, when I say the two of us, you and the coach, will discover together whether or not Man on Fire is the right fit at this time of your life, and if so, what's the right program for you? We have multiple programs. We are doing lots of things on uh, social media platforms for free. We have workshops that are $97. We have coaching programs that go from $2,000 and above. So we're able to cater to everybody, including guys that right now financially are in a tough place. That's why we do a lot of this free stuff on the different social media platforms. So as always, guys, it is such an honor to be able to serve each and every one of you. If you didn't hear this podcast or this live earlier, make sure you go back and you watch on how to be fully expressed as a man. Stop having unilateral conversations in your own head. Make sure you are in a place where you have rebuilt your courage and you're ready to be expressed, be comfortable in your skin, and embody the true masculine leader that you were born to be. All right, guys, it is your man on fire and mentor, David Mailer, saying it's time to rise with passion power, and purpose, and I'll see you next week. So much love, guys. So much love to all of you. Be kind to yourself, be gentle on yourself, and have the humility and have the courage to truly want to grow yourself. So much love, guys.